Of all the prehistoric periods in human evolution, the very earliest chapters are honestly just bonkers. I mean, we're talking about creatures that were sort of human, but also sort of not, living millions of years ago in conditions that would make modern survival shows look like luxury vacations. And frankly, the deeper we dig into these ancient relatives of ours, the weirder the whole story gets. So who exactly was the very first human species? Well, that's where things get interesting. And by interesting, I mean scientists have been arguing about it for decades and we're still not entirely sure. But we've got some pretty wild candidates, each one stranger than the last. It's 2001, and a team of researchers in the middle of the Sahara Desert in Chad, not exactly where you'd expect to find your great-great-great times a few million grandmother, stumbles across something that shouldn't exist. A skull, sitting in what's now desert but was once lush woodland, dating back an absolutely mind-boggling 7 million years. They called him Tumai which means hope of life in the local language. His scientific name is Sahelanthropus chidensis, and this little guy completely broke paleontology's brain when they found him. We're talking about a skull that has this bizarre mix of features, some that scream definitely an ape, and others that whisper, wait, maybe human? Here's what made Tumai so revolutionary. He had tiny, flat canine teeth nothing like the massive, intimidating fangs that male apes use to threaten rivals and show off to females. The skull also showed signs that maybe, and this is still hotly debated, Tumai could walk upright. The foramen magnum, which is the hole where the spine connects to the skull, was positioned more like it would need to be for balancing a head over an upright body. But here's the kicker that really scrambled everyone's expectations. Tumai lived in what is now Chad, thousands of miles from where we thought early humans evolved in East Africa. It's like finding the first car in Antarctica. It just doesn't fit the story we'd been telling ourselves about human origins. Fast forward to Ethiopia, around 4.4 million years ago and we meet another character in this prehistoric soap opera, Artipithecus Ramidus. Her most famous representative is nicknamed Artie, and she's basically everything we didn't expect early humans to be. For decades, scientists assumed our earliest ancestors looked a lot like modern chimpanzees, knuckle-walking, forest-dwelling, with aggressive males much larger than females. Artie said absolutely not to all of that. She was discovered in the 1990s, but it took until 2009 for scientists to fully publish their findings because, frankly, she was so bizarre they needed years to figure out what they were looking at. Artie stood about four feet tall and had this completely unexpected combination of features. Feet that could grasp like an ape's for climbing trees, but also a pelvis that was clearly adapted for walking upright on the ground. Her hands were perfect for careful tree climbing, not the knuckle walking we see in modern chimps. Most surprisingly, male and female Artipithecus were roughly the same size, suggesting they'd figured out a more cooperative approach to relationships rather than the violent competition we see in most primates. The environment where Artie lived was dense woodlands surrounded by monkeys that preferred forest canopies. This discovery completely demolished the old savanna theory the idea that humans evolved because they had to adapt to open grasslands. Instead, it looks like walking upright might have evolved in the trees, not despite them. But let's talk about the fossil that really made early human evolution famous, Lucy. Discovered in 1974 in Ethiopia, Australopithecus afarensis became the poster child for human evolution, and for good reason. Lucy lived about 3.2 million years ago, and her skeleton was about 40% complete, which in the fossil world is like winning the lottery. Most of the time, paleontologists are thrilled to find a single tooth or bone fragment. Lucy gave us entire sections of spine, pelvis, arms, and legs. Standing just over three feet tall, Lucy had long, powerful arms and maintained that ape-sized cranium we'd seen in earlier species. But her pelvis and leg bones told an unambiguous story. She was definitely, completely adapted for walking upright. Her species had been strolling around on two legs for hundreds of thousands of years. The famous Latoli footprints made by Lucy species around 3.6 million years ago show three individuals walking across fresh volcanic ash. 
The tracks are hauntingly familiar. You can see where they place their heel first, pushed off with their big toe, and maintain the kind of arch we have in our own feet. These weren't clumsy experiments in bipedalism. These were confident, practiced walkers. What made Lucy's discovery so revolutionary was the timing. She proved that walking upright came first, long before big brains evolved. For years, people had assumed our ancestors got smart first, then learned to walk upright. Lucy flipped that entire narrative. Now, this is where human evolution takes a truly weird turn. Between 335,000 and 236,000 years ago, practically yesterday in evolutionary terms, a species called Homo naledi was doing something in South African caves that still makes scientists' heads spin. Deep underground in the Rising Star cave system, accessible only through a vertical shaft so narrow it's called Superman's Crawl. Seriously, it's only 25 centimeters high in places. Researchers found over 1,500 fossil bones from at least 15 individuals, all Homo naledi. No other animals, no tools, no signs of predation or flooding. Here's what makes this absolutely bonkers. Homo naledi had craniums about one-third the size of modern humans, yet somehow they were carrying their dead through incredibly difficult cave passages to deposit them in chambers so remote that the bodies could never have gotten there by accident. We're talking about planned behavior that required coordination, fire for light, and possibly even symbolic thinking. In 2023, researchers announced even more mind-bending discoveries from these caves. What appear to be deliberate burials and geometric symbols carved into cave walls. If confirmed, this means a small-brained human species was engaging in symbolic behavior that we thought only modern humans and Neanderthals were capable of. The timing makes it even stranger. Homo naledi was doing all this while early modern humans were evolving elsewhere in Africa. It's like discovering that there was a whole other branch of the human family tree conducting elaborate rituals in underground chambers, and we knew absolutely nothing about it. So who was the very first human species? Honestly, we're still piecing it together. Sahelanthropus chidensis might be our earliest known ancestor at 7 million years old, but we only have skull fragments. Artipithecus ramidus gives us a more complete picture of what early human-like creatures were actually like. But whether they're directly ancestral to us remains hotly debated. What's becoming clear is that early human evolution wasn't the neat linear progression we once imagined. Instead, it was this incredible explosion of experimentation. Different species were trying out completely different approaches to being human-like. Some focused on complex social behaviors, others perfected upright walking, still others developed sophisticated tool use while keeping compact craniums. Recent discoveries keep complicating the story even further. In 2024, researchers announced new finds from Ethiopia showing that multiple human species were living side by side for millions of years. We're not dealing with a simple evolutionary chain, but rather a complex family tree with lots of branches, most of which eventually went extinct. The strangest part might be that behaviors we thought were uniquely modern, symbolic thinking, deliberate burial, even art, keep showing up in species that lived hundreds of thousands of years ago with far smaller neural capacity than ours. Looking at these ancient relatives of ours, what strikes me most is how experimental early human evolution actually was. Our lineage wasn't marching inevitably toward bigger craniums and modern behavior. Instead, different species were trying out radically different solutions to the challenge of being human-like. The more we discover about our earliest ancestors, the more we realize that being human isn't about any single trait. Not intelligence, not tool use, not even walking upright. Instead, it seems to be about this uniquely human tendency to experiment, to try new ways of living and surviving. From Tumai in the ancient woodlands of Chad to Homo naledi in their mysterious cave chambers, they were all, in their own way, pioneers. They were the first chapters in a story of constant innovation and adaptation that continues today. And maybe that experimental spirit, that willingness to try something completely different, is the most fundamentally human trait of all. Pretty wild when you think about it, honestly. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and see you next time on Before Fire.